Today you are going to identify the domain and the range of a function. Number one, vocabulary domain. The domain is actually any input value. You have heard of the x values and the y values. So the domain is the x values. The domain will be the input for any function. The range will be the answer you get as a result of what is being done. So this will be your y values and this will be your output. A function is actually anything that takes your x values, does some calculations and gives you the answer. Now look at this question. Identify the domain and the range. The input is usually the domain. The output is usually the range. So they are asking you to find which one is the domain and which one is the range. The question is self-explaining. So the domain in this case are listed as 0, 1, 2, and 4. The range, which is the answer, which is the output, is listed as 5, 2, 2, and 1. Students, if you need to be confident on which one is the domain and which one is the range, try and think of something that you put inside is a domain. Something that comes out is the range. And the domain in the alphabet list, D comes before R comes after. This question is a little thinking question. It's asking you to identify the domain and the range from the graph. And the easy way to look at the domain is actually all the x values. So I'm going to write the domain as the x values. And I'm going to write my range as all my answers, which is the y values. If you take this graph, this is my x and this is my y. To find the domain, I am going to look at from here to here, these are my x. So this triangle is starting at this point and is going all the way to this point. So from left to right, if I look at it, the leftmost point is negative 1. So I'm going to write negative 1. The rightmost point is, this will be my 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the rightmost point is 5. So that means my domain, which is my input value, my x values, ranges from negative 1 all the way to 5. That means I could take x anywhere from negative 1 to 5. Now look at my range. For the range, which is a y value, which is going up and down. Keep that in mind. It goes up and down. So I am going to look at my highest point and my lowest point where the triangle is. My highest point in this case is 1, 2, 3. So the highermost point is 3. The lowest point is 0. So that means y is ranging anywhere from 0 to 3. That will be my range. Look at the next question. The heart is given. You are asked to identify the domain and the range. So let's write the word domain, which is the input. Keep that in mind, which is my x values. The range is my output, which is my answer, which is my y values. So for the domain, since I'm looking at the x values, I'm looking at my x, and the x goes from left to right. Look at the line. It goes from left to right. So the leftmost point and the rightmost point. The leftmost point is 1. The rightmost point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
So the x value is ranging anywhere from 1 to 7 to get the heart shape. Now look at the range. The range is my y value, which is my answer, which is my output. The y value goes up and down on the graph. It goes up and down. So the higher most point on here and the lower most point on here. The lowest point is 0. The highest point is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the range is from here to here. Look at the next question. This one is interesting. I actually like this question. Domain. Range. Domain is actually my x. Range is actually my y. So now look at the domain, the x value. Look at the x. This is my x. So look at the line x. So it goes from left to right. It goes on the left side and on the right side. So look at your leftmost point. The leftmost point is negative 1. This will be my 0. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So my leftmost point is negative 5. And my rightmost point, on the other hand, does not stop anywhere. The arrow indicated it can keep continuing. So you really do not know where it is stopping. So the only thing you can deal with is the x has to be greater than negative 5. Now look at the range. The range is the y values. Y value being going up and down. Look at the line. It goes up. It goes down. So look at the highest most point, which is here and the lowest point which is here. The lowest point is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And the highest point is negative 0.5. It's between negative 1 and 0. So that will be negative 0.5. And that will be my range. Now focus on the question. Tell whether the pairing is a function. You want to know whether it is a function or not. Imagine that a machine is there and you substitute a number and the machine is going to do some calculation and it's going to spit out a number as an answer. So if you need to know whether it is a function or not, in this case I have to say it is not a function because look at the possibility. If I substitute a 0 or if I open the machine and I put in a 0, I should only be able to get one answer. Here I am getting two answers. So because I'm getting two possible answers for 0, the answer is it is not a function. A perfect function machine will be if I put an input and the machine is going to do some kind of calculations, I should get only one output. In this case, I'm putting in a zero, but I am catching two, which is not possible. I should either get a two or a three. I should not get both. Now tell whether the pairing is a function. Now look at the input. When I put a three, 6, 9, 12, I am getting an answer for each one. So in this case, V and S. And the easy way, one of the easy way to check and see is if you want to know whether it can be a perfect function machine is look for all the inputs to be different. Now look at this one. This one is a no. The reason why it is a no is because when I substitute a 2, I'm getting a 0. And then another time when I'm putting in a 2, I'm getting a 1, which is not possible. If the first time when I get a 0, the second time also, it should have been a 0. So the answer is no, it is not a function. Make a table for the function y equals x minus 5. So I'm going to write y equals x minus 5. And I am talking about the word domain. So the domain being my x value. So this will be my domain. And they are asking me to identify the range. So this will be my range. My range are the y values. Remember that? x is the domain and y is the range. 
So I am given a set of values for the domain, the domain being 10, I'm getting it from here, 10, 12, 15, 18, 29. So let's do some calculations. X is now going to be 10, 10 minus 5, 5, 12 minus 5, 7, 15 minus 5, 10, 18 minus 5, 13, 29 minus 5, 24. They are asking you to identify the range. So these are the range.